Hey everybody, it's Alara. Welcome back to my channel. Um, <clears throat> it is the end of Sunday going into Monday, May 16th. And this is an uh, update on finishing up the second week of Mania for me. Um, I took very little notes this time. This is um, like last minute notes. So hopefully I'm not too scatterbrained, but we know me. Um, and, all right, so let's, let's get into it. Because we know me, I will, I will yap. Okay, so I have, I actually have eight projects to show you because one of my new starts did not go very well because I was on, like, hour 27 of no sleep when I started it. So it was a very small start, and then I went, I, I pulled out one of my, my older projects to, to work on just so that I could kind of try and get some stitching in that wasn't making my brain hurt. All right. So, um, first thing I worked on, and I'm going to flip these over. All right. So this is Girl Picking Stars. This is one of my China kits that I'm trying to get through. I, I wish I knew who the artist was because this is a super cute chart. It's got a lot of back stitching. I am definitely going to be um, doing the back stitching as I go because otherwise I will not ever finish it. I forgot my chair again. <clears throat> trying to be kind of quiet because that one's here this time. And I didn't count stitches at all because these are all, all paper charts. I did not think this through very well when I started Mania in thinking in, in not thinking about the fact that none of these are going to have pattern keeper capabilities. So that's been a little tiring. But I got a little start and you know, just filled in you know, some, I think there's all of like three colors in there. I was kind of hoping to fill in the star, but this week I really felt like I didn't get a whole lot of time to stitch when I finally got to sit down and stitch. Um, I'm still, I mean, there's always catch up. There's always catch up in our um, business. So it's just a matter of where I am in a project and how fast I need to get it out. All right. So next I worked on, I want to say all but... All but two kits are from China this time, so it is what it is. Um, you know, my my thoughts and opinions on it, um, if you've been with me for a while, uh, I explain it in my first week mania thing. Anyways, this is like a, this is an embroidery kit. But for, for mania, I've been starting all my kits that I own. And I found out that I am not a fan of whatever the heck this stitch is called that the sun is doing. And I, 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 the explanations of them for putting this puffy stuff in this cotton or whatever, I, I can't wrap my head around that. So we'll see if I, how we do. I was not a fan of this. I don't think it looks anything like the picture, which I mean, I know that a lot of this is very free to interpretation. Got a lot of shadows. Um, but yeah, this one was not my favorite one to work on. I may pull it out still in the future, but it's not going to break my heart if I don't. So there's that one. Um, I am only running on about four and a half hours of sleep, so if I'm feel like I'm rushing a little bit, but I also don't want to keep you guys for another hour when I'm coming on weekly because that's a lot of that's a time commitment. Speaking of, by the way, thank you for joining me. How rude of me! Um, and th I've had a, quite a few new subscribers in the last week, um, so thank you so much for coming and checking out my channel. Um, hoping you stick around for a little while and uh, enjoy what you see. Um, for those of you coming back, thank you so much. You are so appreciated, all of you. Um, 
the the feedback and comments that I've gotten on my last couple of videos has been very encouraging. So thank you. Okay, back to it. Now this is um, this is one that I was gifted recently. I did show that in uh, one of my last videos. Um, but this is Tan Carousel Horse by Bernat. And this is a chart from 1987, I believe. Yeah, 87. And I know that there's a few in the series. Um, she gave me two of them. And I'm definitely, I'm going to be starting both of those for sure. Um, and I got, I actually felt like this one got a decent a decent amount in. I was pretty happy with this. I, I didn't do any of the horse at all, but I got almost all the saddle done. The gaps here are going to be like the flowers that were in the saddle. I was loving working on this one. And I, the thre I mean, for almost a 40 year old kit that it's in super good condition. This is the fabric that came with it. Um, the thread still feels very soft. It's not like like dry rot or anything like that. Nothing you know, bad's happened to it. The only thing that was an issue was that <laughs> the needle that was with the kit rusted. <laughs> so, but that's up in the corner where the frame, I'm not worried about that. So I just, I got a new needle and we're plugging away. So this one is definitely, definitely coming back out to play because I really enjoyed working on this one. Um, Girl Picking Stars is probably going to come into play again to you. I mean, I don't know when I grab stuff as I feel like working on it. Um, so yeah. Okay, next one is another embroidery kit. And this is just a flower bouquet. And I actually learned embroidery before I learned to cross stitch. So a lot of the stitches that I had started working on really felt like riding a bike. It was a little rusty, but as I started, um, as I started doing them, I was like, oh, I remember doing this. I have not done any of the stitches except for the French knots that are in the flowers. Um, I'm definitely, I've Googled a little, Googled, I, yeah, did a search, a uh, YouTube search for some tutorials on these. And I mean, it looks pretty straightforward. I think it's just going to be a matter of, um, practice makes perfect, right? So yeah, so there's that. And I got, this is another one that I actually felt like I had some time on this one. And I got, a, I got a decent chunk done. Man, these shadows are killing me tonight. Um, but I wanted to get all the kind of leafy looking stuff out of the way. I actually really enjoy French knots. Um, they, they don't bother me. So I, I kind of look forward to doing French knots. My not favorite stitch besides the one that I showed you is satin stitch because I either get my stitches too far apart or way too close together and they just crowd each other. Um, but I think I did okay on, on that leaf stitch, which is basically a modified stat satin stitch. And then this one, they called it a feather stitch. And I had to just guess on how to do that one. I think I did pretty good, but, um, they didn't have like instructions on their on the, the back here they just have like picture instructions and they didn't have that one so I just looked at the looked at this picture and figured it out I think it turned out all right um I don't know how often this will come out but I'm I'm definitely this is one that I would definitely come back to whereas the sunset one I'm like nah, yeah if I get really bored one day after all these whips are done like I said, I don't, I don't know how much that'll, that'll come out. We'll see. Okay. So this next one I purchased off of eBay over 15 years ago, at least. And I 
sorry, floss tube itchy nose has been a thing for me the last few videos. When I bought her and I got her, um, of course, this is way before I knew anything about copyright. This is probably some Japanese design. I've had her for 15 years. I've taken her out, looked at her, not started her, yada, yada, yada. I was starting her in a very sleep deprived state. And that is when I noticed this, this, this fairy has no clothes on. She is a naked fairy. So that's what I'm calling her naked fairy. I mean, she's got this like, whatever the heck that is down there. But yeah, I mean, it's nice and stylized. So I don't feel like it's an offensive photo or picture or whatever. And I think it's pretty. I love her wings. It came with beads, but there's nowhere in the chart that shows you where to put the beads. So I guess it's like a choose your own bead adventure. Um, but yeah. Yeah, 15 years before I noticed that she had no clothes on. Uh, like I said, I was in, oh, I think, hour 27 when I started this. And this is on black fabric. And I actually have to, I, it came with a beading needle and an embroidering, or a, and a, what you call it, needle, whatever, for the cross stitch. I made it into a T for top. Because otherwise, I will have no clue which way up this goes. That's all I got done. 27 hours of no sleep on black, black fabric on a paper chart. And my I, my eyes were watering trying to, to do this. Now, the reason I was on hour 27 of no sleep is because the night before, I was not tired. And was not tired and was not tired and was not tired. And 10 o'clock a.m. rolls around before I'm like, oh, you know, I think I might actually be able to get some. I'm not going to bed at 10 o'clock in the morning. That's ridiculous, even for me. So I just stayed up. So I wanted to do more on her, but like I said, my eyeballs were watering. I wasn't quite, it was still too early to go to bed when I was messing with that. So I actually pulled out. Um, one of my full coverage pieces that I, I really is my focus piece, um, but just kind of took a break a little bit on this because of, um, mania and what I wanted to do for it. Seriously. Um, but this is Boudreaux and this is my friend's German Shepherd. Um, who passed away a couple of months ago now. And um, so I'm doing this as a memorial piece for him. He doesn't know it. Surprise, he doesn't watch my channel, which is it's fine. But um, so yeah, I got, I only got like 265 stitches in. But I, throw, I thought I'd throw something, something uh, more familiar. I closed that, I locked it, and I'm still going to use that. Really? But, um, where do I want to put this so you can see? This way. So, I just worked down, down in his ear. I got the last bit of white. Oh my god, these shadows. Uh, here, and then just started working on the next part of his ear. He's parked right there in the way. So, but, got something out. Like I said, this is kind of familiar. It wasn't super hard, because I could use Pattern Keeper and kind of zone out on it. But I'm looking forward to getting back into him for sure. And pretty much anything not on a paper chart. <laughs> I am definitely looking forward to the end of May as far as as far as the change for that goes. I'm I'm absolutely having a blast with starting all the things. Um but I I do miss my um uh, my proper full full coverage pieces on on Pattern Keeper. Okay. So next, um, this is a chart that my mom handed down to me um, years and years ago. And this is from the Creative Circle, and this is a 1986 copyrighted chart. And I'm doing, this is the top one. It was one of those kits. Um, I think she was in like a Kid of the Month Club kind of thing. And 
these are early Fords. And this, it's like on a printed fabric, so this is already on there. You don't have to stitch that. And I was really enjoying this one too. And I've been wanting to start this for years and years and years and just never did. Oh, it's kind of big. So there's my start. Fold this up so you can see it. Now this is a really, for me, it was a really interesting stitch. Now, it's not perfect. It's not gorgeous by any sense of the imagination because this is the first time I've ever done something like this. And this is actually um, Persian wool and not floss, which I have a funny story that I want to tell you guys. Is that focusing? I think it's focusing. But it almost looks like it's braided because of the, it's a split stitch. And I just, I thought the effect was pretty, pretty cool. But... This is the stuff that I'm working with. Now the instructions say for the yarn, you do have to separate the plies of yarn. And what I did was I just took my needle and, you know, I was kind of doing like, like you do when you pull floss, I just stuck my needle in and pulled. <clears throat> well, I didn't realize it, but I pulled one ply of thread that I needed. I didn't realize it. So I actually tried to pull, I didn't try, I did. I pulled apart one ply of yarn because if you're, if you're familiar with yarn at all, most yarn is made of the roving. The roving is a couple of pieces of roving plied into one ply of yarn. So even just one ply of yarn has several, and that probably has a different name, a different um, term than ply for the roving part. Um, I didn't realize it. So I sat there. And untwisted one ply of yarn. And then when I started stitching, I would pull it through the fabric and then it would come apart. And I was like, what is wrong with this yarn? I, I Maybe it's too old and I'm not going to be able to use this and this whole kit is a waste. And blah, blah, blah. Look, I have this <laughs> pile of... And then I looked again and the instructions specifically mentioned three ply yarn. I'm like, that's not, that was only two plies. So I pulled the bundle apart off of here. I'll just, I'll show you with the, the white yarn. So I pulled the whole bundle off. And that was one thing of yarn. That is one ply of yarn. And then this actually untwists again into what I showed you that I was trying to stitch with. I felt like an idiot. But I learned. And hopefully I don't need that one length of yarn. Because it's, it's, it's just floof now. Floof. So I thought I'd share that because, yeah, I laughed. Once I realized what I had done, I was like, ah, I'm an idiot. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, if you've ever stitched with yarn, have you had that problem? Is that a common thing? To be an idiot sometimes with your, with your instructions? <laughs> so I, but I, I enjoy that one. I think that one may not come out very often, but definitely when I feel like I want a break from cross stitch, that one's one that'll definitely be pulled out. And then tonight's new start that I uh, was working on is Celestial Gathering. Now you can't see it very well. Like if you, re there we go. If you really look, this has um, the astrological signs on it. And I didn't even realize that until I pulled out the chart. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Made me think of Megan from Stitching Moon. 
she's she's really into astrology. I think it's interesting. I, I don't know how to do any of it, but I enjoy listening to stuff like that. So, um, this is a four page pattern and I started in the middle and then, oops, hang on. I'm not used to not having stuff in hoops and cue snaps and things. So like three stitches in was the middle of the pattern on this page. So I was like, cool, I'll just work page by page. And I love it so far. The colors are really cool. Now this is using the, that not, um, like ni nylon rayon, um, or the silicone permeated, um, cotton thread that the China company's label is silk. It's definitely not silk. Now that I've stitched with some silk, I'm like, yeah, it's not silk. It's pretty. Um, it's really shiny. It's kind of hard to tell that in the video, but in person it's, it's, it's pretty shiny. Um, my tiger piece from last video is also in this rayon thread. And then I have like two other kits that have this thread. It's a pain in the butt to work with because it, the, the, the two strands don't stay together. They like, they split everywhere. They don't like to stitch evenly at all. Um, and my tiger piece was kind of being a nightmare to work on. Um, I wasn't enjoying it. I didn't want to, I'm like, I'm not pulling this back out for a while, if ever, because it was such a pain to work on. It started making me worry about, um, the one whip that I have. Uh, it's a huge, huge kit of peacocks. And I'm like, I'm never going to finish that. Uh, but I had a fantastic suggestion from uh, My Daily Hades. She is on both Instagram and here on YouTube. And she suggested trying my beeswax on it. Now, I will be honest. I hate how this stuff makes the thread feel. It has, it gives it kind of a, a sticky feeling without leaving a sticky residue. It just has that sort of gummy feeling, but it made it so that I can, I can stitch with it. It stays together for the most part. It doesn't, um, like each of the strands will like fray really bad at the ends. And like this much of the thread is unusable by the time you get to the end of the strand, um, the stitches weren't laying flat on my other pieces that, you know, I'd have weird bubbles that beeswax run it through once and it was perfect. I don't know how many of y'all actually may have anything like that as far as that kind of thread in your, um, in your stash. But if you have that kind of thread, get yourself some beeswax to use it. Totally, totally worth it. Game changer on that. I'm, I, that was fun to work on. And I'm hoping that it's not a combination of like really crappy fabric on the tiger one. Um, and that the beeswax will help me enjoy that one too, because that one is a beautiful picture, but ugh, I did not like working on it. That's it. Those were my, that's what I've worked on this past week. Um, I actually only have four true cross stitch kits left. Now I did remember that I had some stashed in the kids room. And it was a week's worth of kits. And I was like, oh my gosh. Plus I still have a ton of embroidery kits um, in my bin back here in my storage area. So I'm like, I definitely have the rest of the month that I can fill up. But it's only going to be four more cross stitch kits. And I'm probably going to get those... Um, done, not necessarily out of the way, but I'm going to do this first because I don't know how realistic it is for me to be able to do like the last week of mania. Um, at least not with consistency all seven days because the last week, um, I'm actually going to have guests over for the last week, the last full week of May. And then, um, the Memorial Day weekend, Thursday through Monday, we have an event on our property for our business, for our hammock business. Um, and my dad is actually flying in from Arizona, no, New Mexico. Uh, my, my mother, uh, my stepmom is a traveling nurse. 
and they are in New Mexico right now where she's working while my dad's coming in so that he can take the little guy so that I can actually participate fully in this event. I have usually I'm at home during the day with the little guy. If it's, you know, if it's one of the winter hangs, we don't like having him out too, too, too long in the cold. Um, and then of course at night he's at home or inside the house. So I'm here inside the house. Um, you know, I mean, maybe get a day if I can get one of the kids to watch him. Um, but this will be the first like full event that I'll get to participate in. So I don't know how realistic it is for me to actually have some starts. I may be able to take my kids to my hammock and start them there. But again, I don't know how practical that is. Um, especially with some of the kits that I have left. We'll see. We will see. So it may be, it may be another two weeks before I see you guys. I may have a lot to show you at that point. Um, but I don't, we'll see. I, I may do, actually, no, I should be able to do the third week update like I did this time. Um, but then that last week, it might just be, we'll see. No promises. You know, I don't, I don't do promises when it comes to when I'm going to put videos out. <clears throat> so, um, so those are the plans, immediate plans for the rest of May. I haven't really, besides the four, um, cross stitch kits that I have left, I haven't really picked out the last three that I'm going to do as far as the embroidery kits go. <clears throat> um, excuse me, tea tonight. Um, <clears throat> okay, so last, uh, last week I forgot to mention, um, I'd had a couple of people suggest, uh, I don't know if you remember, if you've watched my, um, previous videos, I had had some fabric come in from the Stitch Me that I'm doing the new normal sampler on. And unfortunately it was cut crooked. Now I have enough to fit the whole pattern on, but it, I only have like an inch margin. Um, down at the bottom of it. Upper is like two inches, bottom's like an inch, squeaking an inch. Um, and I, it fits, so I wasn't going to bother her with, with it. But a couple of people said, you know, you might want to let her know because some people may not be okay with that and maybe she needs to know if there's a good quality issue, you know, quality control or whatever. And I was like, yeah, that's actually kind of a good point. So I sent her an email and let her know, hey, I love the fabric, um, you know, the project fit, I have no problems with it. I just wanted to let you know that this happened with the fabric. And I specifically said, I am not looking for anything. I'm perfectly fine with how it's going. No big deal. So she emailed back, you know, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for letting me know. And next thing I know, I have an email that says I've been refunded. Brandy, it's not what I meant for you to do at all. Um, now the card that she had tried to refund it to refund it to is the one that had gotten hacked and I had to close. Um, so, you know, I, I emailed her back and said, you know, you're probably, your refund's probably not going to go through. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it. I said, if you really feel like you have to do, cause as a business owner, I know how I feel when something gets goofed up and, I can't make it right or, or something like that. I was like, you know, I was just going to spend it in the store anyway. So, um, she ended up actually sending me a, a gift card for the price of the fabric. So I don't know what I'm going to get yet. It's still sitting there because I don't have a specific project. And for her stuff, I definitely want to have a purpose in mind when I order something from her. So, so I just wanted to put that out there that even though I had an, a quality issue with the only piece of fabric I've gotten from her, her customer service was phenomenal as far as kind of, in my opinion, going above and beyond to fix it. So, um, you know, if, if the cricket issue put you off on my, my one video, definitely don't let that put you off from, from trying her. Um, yes, she has an extremely long wait for her fabrics. In my opinion, the quality of the fabric, the quality of the colors that she's got in her fabrics, and definitely her silks are absolutely worth the wait. 
So, and let's be honest, it's cross-stitch. It's not life or death. We can wait, you know, three, four months if it if that's something that color-wise we really like. Go for it. She definitely comes through. Okay. Um, I wanted to also touch on some a little bit more in the future plans. Um, I know I had mentioned, uh, so the end of May, my the very last day of May, is actually not going to be a kit start. It's going to be my start as a reward for doing all of my kits through the month. Um, Suki, the brown-eyed stitcher, she had um, mentioned that a chart reminded her of me, and that she also wanted to stitch it. And that is Canopy Heart. I don't remember who the artist is. Let me look it up real quick. Stop having seizures. Have I not downloaded it yet? I'll insert a photo because I keep forgetting to actually put it in Pattern Keeper, apparently. And the artist will be here because I can't remember that either. Um... Dakota Detweiler? Is that right? I don't know. What's the screen say? Um, but she wanted to start it May 31st. I have sent her her fabric. She has received her fabric. Um, she doesn't absolutely hate the, uh, the stiff stiffness of my 28 count. Um, but we are going to start that on May 31st. So I'm very much looking forward to that. I have my fabric already done. Um, like prepped for it. And so there's that. So if you, uh, any of you guys have Canopy Heart, feel free to, to join us at the end of May. I don't, I don't know if we're going to like make a hashtag or anything for it, or if we're just going to start it and stitch it. I'm actually thinking of going through my whip list and actually pulling, um, Megan from Stitching Moon actually has kind of inspired me. She works on certain whips on certain days of the month. Like her Christmas projects, she's working on the 25th of every month. Her Halloween projects, she works on the 13th and 31st of every month. I love it. So I'm actually kind of thinking of looking at the days that I started some of my whips that I, that I don't pick up often enough and working them on the days that I started them. So maybe the, the end of, you know, the last day of the month, every time that comes up, I'll, I'll work on Canopy Heart. Um, and then the 5th of June, uh, Jess from Live, Laugh, Love Stitcher, she and I started chatting. We have really, really similar tastes in, um, like, love of horses. Now, she's actually a horsewoman. I am not physically, but I, I love horses anyways. Um, we had a lot of charts in common, and we talked about, and I talked about this a little bit, but we actually have finalized what chart we want to do because we had quite a few charts in common that we already owned. And we decided that we are going to do Crystal Garden, Chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs, uh, artwork by Rose Kahn. And I, there's actually another chart of hers that I saw that I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. It's on my wish list now, but it feels very much like these two horses are kind of the theme for that one. It reminds me of a couple, like blah, 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 blah. some of Rose Khan's charts remind me of um, Amy Stewart's artwork in the kind of the color scheme and kind of the eclectic collection of things in the picture. But anyways, so we're going to start this on the 5th of June and then I'll pull this out on the fifth of each month and work on it at least, at least that one day a month, if not more. Um, and then I had also talked about beautiful simplicity from stitching moon last. I keep putting this down. I do this every time I put it down and pick it up. I put it down and pick it up. And this was a chart that she had sent me from her shop because she's amazing. And I picked this one out because it reminded me of something that, <laughs> really, <laughs> uh, what's happening? <laughs> Here, let's try it this way. 
so don't throw it at you. <laughs> um, but I think my, my, I thought my husband would really enjoy that. And he did. He was like, oh, that's really cool. So our anniversary is coming up June 18th. And I'm going to start this on June 18th. On our anniversary. And then the 18th of every month, I will pull it out and work on it. For at least that one day. I may, we have a few anniversaries that we celebrate like when we met when we started dating that kind of thing I may pull I may pull that one out each one of those dates because they're different dates throughout the month so I might do that I was gonna try and put it down again guys um and then lastly um I wanted to show you I have acquired a chart um I have not been able to speak with Sarah yet about exactly how she wants me to go about talking about this but I have this chart and it's called sunlight now Sarah is uh, peace love and stitches on Et not Etsy well no not on Etsy on um, Instagram I will make sure to link everybody I talk about below and she was kind enough to provide this chart. And I will be honest, come January or come next year when my no chart buy thing is done, I'm going to be a broke girl because every single one of her charts I have favorited. Now, she is on Etsy as Total Cross Stitch. Um, she just started designing and I really am impressed with um, the designs that she's, she's putting out so far. Um, she's either using free source um, uh, art or um, like uh, Jasmine Beckett Griffith has some charts that are artwork that she's put out that is, um, you know, free for use, free domain or whatever. So she's got a couple of hers charted. Um, but I just I love I love her charts. So she is um, very like she just opened her Etsy shop. So go check her out. I will link her shop below as well. Um, but yeah, I want every single one that she's put out so far. And I already have a ton of charts. <laughs> Let's be honest. I really don't need more, but I'm like, oh, I have to have them. Um, da -dum, da -dum. now I think I, I do want to start that one simply because it's, it's a full coverage piece that ha it's got 61 colors, but let's be real. That's like on the low end of number of colors for me when it comes to charts. Um, I tend to really like working on, um, max color charts and things like that. Um, I think probably July is when I will start those. I will be honest. I have been having the crazy girl in the back of my head talking to me and going, you know, this was the year of no new charts. How about next year? We, we do all the starts. And I think this mania for me has kind of spurred that on of, you know, if you own it, why don't you start it? It's kind of pointless to have all these charts and never, ever let them have the light of day. I don't necessarily want to be that girl that has 500 whips. I also don't want to be the girl that has charts that she never, ever got to do and regrets it. I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided yet. Obviously, I have starts coming out the wazoo with this month, plus some planned starts coming up. Um, and I have some that I've like got fabric for that are calling to me. I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see on that one. Uh, the only other thing I think I wanted to touch on a little bit before I go is um thank you for um those of you who have checked out my floss tube extra bag edition um i went into a little bit more detail about my my bags and after the feedback that i've gotten how i personally feel about it i am i'm doing a website there will be a dedicated website uh .com. i have the domain the website is not live yet I don't know that it'll even link you to, I have a like coming soon thing, but I think I forgot to actually publish it. Um, 
And I don't know that my domain is actually linked to the host yet. That's probably why I didn't publish it. Um, but that because of how my bags are with the straps and everything, I want to, for people who like maybe never actually go do anything, they may not want the strap. So I don't know that I'll just include it. It will be its own separate. You can buy the straps. You can customize how many of the, um, up to three of the extenders for different sizes of bags. And I am going to, I'm waiting on hardware. I'm going to make an adjustable strap as well. Um, so those will be, you can purchase those separately. And then of course the bags will be, but because they'll all have the grommets on them and the grommets are useful if you just want to hang them for storage. So even if you don't plan on ever taking them anywhere, you can still utilize those grommets as far as, you know, maybe freeing up some sort storage space in your home. I will definitely be looking into doing a giveaway to celebrate the launch of the website when that comes up. So keep an eye out in my future videos uh, for that announcement because uh, that will probably be in my floss tube videos. I'm not going to completely separate the bag talk um, from floss tube. I just don't have the energy in me to do separate videos like that all the time. You'll just have to deal with me talking about it or hit the next 10 seconds button until I stop yapping about it. <laughs> um, do you want to see the ones that I finished? If you don't, feel free to, you know, head on out because I'm really, there's not much of a life update as far as stuff goes because it's been pretty boring. My sleep schedule sucks. What's new? I've been working and I've been stitching. That's it. <laughs> Plus I didn't write anything down. If I don't write it down, I don't remember to talk about it. Um, so yeah, if you're not interested in seeing those, thank you so much for, for checking out what uh, Mania has had happen over the last week. And hopefully, like I said, next week I plan on doing another video again. So see you then. If you do want to see what the bags have so far come that I've so far finished up, I will show you. Now these are all, um, and I did post post these on Instagram to my um, at Lara Designs handle, um, but I kind of wanted to. I just want to show you because I'm excited. So these are all from Jos the Three Wishes Fabrics Josephine Wall Collection. So that's the inside. And these all have the little turtle buttons, <laughs> or the, the snaps. And then, I don't remember what the works are all called. I have to, I'll have to look them up. But the quilting follows, um, kind of just follows the picture a bit. I didn't want to do like a traditional squiggly, um, squiggly quilting, because I just felt like that was going to take away a bit from the art. So I just tried to kind of flow with it. So it's it's not super noticeable. I kind of try to make it a little subtle. But very sim a lot of these are going to be very similar. This one's um, Magical Meeting. I remember this one. So Magical Meeting. And same inside. Now there's some subtle differences um, between these bags. These two, I have the dolphin fabric on the bottom here and then the fish fabric on the top here or on the bottom of that one. Just kind of dependent on, I don't like wasting fabric, so it just kind of depends on what I had how much of as to what got utilized where. So this one has the, the dolphin on the bottom here. There's this pretty lady. And then these have the fishy fabric. That is the lady with the ship again. And then there's also, I kind of coordinated the um, thread color to the zipper color. So if it's got a blue zip, one of the eyelid. So most of the blue zippers have like a gray thread, 
one of them has a purple thread and then the rest of these have a purple zipper with purple thread. But again, I tr tried to make it so that it complements the picture and does not detract from the actual artwork. So you might not even really be able to tell where I quilted it, and that's okay for now. So again, I don't remember the name of this one either. And last but not least, got this pretty fairy again. Um, there is one, yes, this one, this one is going to be for the giveaway. Now, this is not happening just yet. Like I said, this will actually be, um, when the website launches is when I'll actually do the giveaway for it, um, as a celebration and a thank you for putting up with, you know, my fabric parade and my bag talk. <laughs> and um, when that happens, I will be, you, you can pick your strap. There's, I've got two different colors, navy blue and purple. So you can pick which one you want. And if you want extenders for possible future purpose, pur it's, it's not spiked, I swear. Future purchases then you'll be able to have your bags ready to go. Okay, I think that is it for this week. Oh, Darren, it's under an hour. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so yeah, take care. Have a good week stitching if you're doing any kind of mania stuff. Um, have fun, and I will see you guys next week. Take care. Bye.